Hi, my name is Melanie Fillingham. I'm here from Agriculture Canada. My research was on measuring emissions from the dairy manure management technique of solid liquid separation and in vessel composting. The emissions we were measuring were carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and ammonia. So reduction of greenhouse gases from agriculture processes have been of high interest. Solid liquid separation and in vessel composting may mitigate greenhouse gases. Solid separation reduces carbon in the liquid fraction, which reduces the methane formation potential. Active composting ensures that there are aerobic conditions, which reduce the likelihood that methane and nitrous oxide will be formed, with the potential trade-off of increased ammonia emissions. So upon my literature review, I did not come across any um, studies that measured the emission rates from in-vessel composting. So the objective of my research was to measure the emission rates of these four pollutants, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and ammonia, from solid liquid separation, in-vessel composting, and the stored component of the compost. So the experiment was conducted on a commercial dairy farm just outside of Ottawa, Ontario. Raw manure from 150 milking cows was pumped into a screw press separator. The separated liquid portion was then pumped into an anaerobic storage tank, and the separated solid portion into a in-vessel composter. The separator and composter were enclosed in a building in which, which had natural ventilation. The composter had an exhaust that extended to the outside of the building, and the composter was also controlled for temperature and aeration. The compost left the composter and piled within the building in large heaps in which the process of composting continued to occur, as indicated by thermophilic temperatures. So emissions sourced from two different um, locations within the building, which had the stored compost and the separator, and from the exhaust, which had emissions from the in-vessel active composting. So to measure the emissions from the stored compost and the separator, the building was completely sealed off to act as a large chamber, and the concentration over time was measured. Concentrations were measured using open path lasers, a photoacoustic multi-gas monitor, and gas samples run on the GC. A linear regression was fitted to this data, and the slope indicated the emission rates. To determine the emission rates from the in-vessel composter, a mass balance around the system was performed, with the production assumed to be the difference between the outlet and the inlet. Um, so those concentrations were taken using gas samples run on a GC, as well as an ammonia acid trap. Those concentrations paired with the flow rate um, was helped to determine the emission rates. So over here in figure two, you can see the overall results expressed in grams per hour of each gas, methane, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, and ammonia. It's divided into the season that they were taken in and also subdivided into the component. So the orange indicates the stored compost and separator and the yellow indicates emissions from the um, in-vessel composting or active composting. So if you refer also to figure three, it shows just the emissions from the exhaust, so the in-vessel composting. And it's easier to see some of the trends in figure three opposed to figure two. Um, because especially of the gases such as methane and nitrous oxide, which were dominated from the stored compost emissions. Um, so back to figure two, we can see here that methane and nitrous oxide were mainly emitted from stored compost and separation, um, opposed to the active in-vessel composting. And we can see that ammonia was mainly emitted from the in-vessel active composting. So overall, the active composting um, emissions were 99.8% or emissions of carbon, sorry, emissions of carbon were 99.8% carbon dioxide with only 0.02% of methane. Whereas the stored compost had between one and 10% emissions of carbon being in the form of methane. So in order to uh, compare this technique to other dairy manure management techniques, the entire process, which would also include the storage of the liquid fraction, had to be considered. So to determine the emissions from this um, storage of the liquid fraction, an IPCC tier two equation was used. And then this scenario, so the solid liquid separation, active composting, the stored compost, and the storage of the liquid fraction was compared to a hypothetical situation if the same amount of raw manure produced went directly into a conventional manure storage tank. And uh, now we can go over to figure four. It shows the results of the greenhouse gases from the two scenarios. So this one here being the composting system and this being the conventional raw manure storage. And it was found that composting decreased emissions from 70 to 73% on a carbon dioxide equivalent basis. 
Um, so contrast to that, ammonia emissions were increased from this system when compared to literature values from conventional raw manure storage. So in conclusion, separation and composting is a successful mitigation practice for reducing greenhouse gases um, with the trade-off that ammonia emissions are increased. And the majority of the methane that was released was from the storage of the compost. So further uh, research could look towards decreasing the emissions from stored compost or trying to decrease the emissions of ammonia. Thank you.